Hello guys, this is James and today we're going to talk about the core concept of view, reactivity. To understand the reactivity of view, let's have a simple example. Here the body only have, yes, the P counter. The counter came from the root component of view, okay? It has uh, counter equals to 1 and we let it every 1 second it uh, changes values. As we render it to the browser, so what will happen here is every one second it will render games. So actually I think that's the reactivity is here. It's like uh, when the data change, also in the browsers the things are constantly changed. Today we're gonna achieve two goals. First, we have to understand how we will really make those data reactive. And the second, based on what View has done, we make our own versions of, re of reactive data. Okay, let's get started. So first, maybe we first are using the HTML. So with this one, we will just make this DOM to be reactive. It will instantly change if we assign a new value to it, okay? And the first we should define our object. Then Second one, let's define a with this function. Let's try to connect it to this tag and then make it reactive. Parameters should be here is the most important point. The reactivity of view 2.6 all based on the object dot define property. This method. This method Define property of object really change the behavior of, for instance, when you use object dot key, you can get the value of key by using object dot key, right? However, in the third parameter of this method, if you define a get function, so the behavior of object dot key will be direct to what's included in the function, and the set function will be if you assign a new value to object dot key then the set function will be called. To make the result observable, we can do something like this. And always remember that in the get functions, we have to return the values. So the return value will be object.key, what will be shown on the screen. And set function will be called when the new value passed to the object.key. And as we said, that if there's new value equals to the old value, then we don't do anything. But if not, then we just give the new value to the old value. And to make it more observable, of course, we just print something out. Yeah, the new value is something. Okay, I think we have finished our first function, define reactivity functions. With these functions, now we can really uh, call it by give it a object and, and the key, and then the value of the key. And after the function will be called, then we will just try to use object of key or assign a new value to the object of key to see what will happen. And if it runs as expected, we will get the both console log, the result of console log because of the get and set function both will be called. Okay, we found two errors in the code. The first one, foo should be uh, a string and the quotation marks. The second, the object should be initiated uh, by an uh, empty object like this. Okay, let's run it. Okay, successful. Uh, get object full. That's the uh, one way try to do object dot full. And then if we assign new value to it, then it will really get our new values here. So actually, I think this is like a very primitive for reactivities. Let's have a tiny recap here. The key is to use object.define property, this one, and then define the get and the set functions in it. Okay, after we finish the simple reactivity functions, we just put it in the HTML because we want to make the data using in this uh, tag reactive means that it can be constantly changed and can be constantly rendered on the browser in the browser yeah. so later maybe we can set it in uh, html 
needs, needs to be something and then make it constant change and then it will constantly render this step. So in order to do this, I have put an update on this function here. So whenever we uh, set the values, give it a new values, it will update the DOM instantly. And uh, here actually we can write the update DOM, this function. We make the app in the HTML, get link to our reactive data. And that is object uh, dot key, or we can specify the object dot uh, foo, something like that. Now here we just uh, define activities here. We use still the object, and then it should the key should be full. So it's an empty string, and then we give it uh, we assign a new value to it. And uh, to make a constant change, we can use the new date string time string. So it will already shows the time. So actually with this one, we give it a new, I mean value that is the date. And since it is, has been reactive and we will assign a new value to it. So, so the set uh, function will be called and then we can put, we can give it a constant change set interval. One, every one seconds, we can give it a new value here. So let's see what will happen. Yeah. See, actually every one second it change, it just refresh and the change the, in the HTML, in the P tag, and it just to give us a refresh every one second to show the exact time. Okay. And in the code, we can see that actually a new value has been assigned to object.foo and then automatically, automatically it will really call the set functions. In the set functions, there's always a update DOM. So every time we give it a new value, we will update the DOM instantly. So that's the chain of the logic which we achieve when we change the data and then it will automatically update the DOM. Let's get back to the JavaScript files. Earlier we just assigned a very simple value object.key but if it's something more complicated then what are we going to do here? Actually, if we really give it an object and the inside the object, there's also a lot of object. And let's try to run the functions to see what it will, yeah, how it will gonna work. Um, as we can see, the first one get full, correct? Because we really use object.full here. And then we assign a new value. So the new value is 11, correct? And then bar, correct? and the new value is 22, right? And then we try to get the object dot bar double R dot A. And in this case, what we get is just get bar. It's just, it's just a range until here. So it get bar. And then if we want to, want to assign 33 to this one, still it didn't give us a new value is 33, rather it just the, run queue here, get bar. So there's a problem. So when we just using an object inside the object, it doesn't really give us any reaction here. So we have to modify it a little bit. Mm, so we have to do a lot of iteration inside the object. If it's an object, we really make it reactive again. So actually the same we have to change is here actually. So again, the um, observe function. Then we just pass. So if the last value, which is this one, is still object, then we will just uh, have another iteration. Okay, so now let's just uh, Run it. Let's see what happens. Okay, now it runs correct. And as we see, 
that uh, the last one it will first get bar because we yes use object dot bar and then it will get a so the a in the bar in this object has been reactive too and then if we assign a 33 to the uh, object dot bar dot a then of course it will have a new value appears here okay this is the first glitch we have solved the second glitch the last object by double i is a object two right if we assign it a new value and the value is also object and then maybe it doesn't function well actually this a can be like okay we don't want uh, a the original element we change it to something different if you run it let's see what will happen Actually, yeah, until here, the new value is object object. Yeah, actually, because the object dot bar is reactive. So then it, because and then this one is object. So we assign a new object to the object dot bar. So the set function of object bar has been uh, called. But then if we will assign a new value to this one, nothing happened. It just run until object dot bar here, so it we get a bar. But then uh, the new value uh, it hasn't been reflected. Why is like that? It's we just assign a value here, and it doesn't really give. Uh, it doesn't really go through again the uh, different activity functions because we assign it here, and then it just stop. So it has to be again being uh, I mean using the defined reactivities to define it um, so we need to assign the new value so here I think we just can add observe new value because let's say when the new value assign assigned to elements b right then when the set function will be called and then the observe new value uh, so it can also define it, it is it as reactive so that's the second glitch and let's see if it work here yeah actually it work here so the new value is one thousand it has been uh, printed here that's another glitch we have to solve and uh, is that we directly assign a new value to, to and uh, if we do something like this this we are not reactive and uh, the, in other cases if we is object is not a uh, object is an array and if we define our array, that is maybe the simple one, one two, three. and we cannot make it reactive based on this function why because it only works on the object, even arrays object, but it cannot be, uh, this function cannot be used on the arrays. So we also have to alter something. But then these two glitches will be the further modification in the future. So at least today, what we have achieved is to make a simple reactive functions and then really in the HTM make the data reactive it changes in, then it instantly will be rendered on the browser and the second thing that we find some glitches out and we try to patch it up that's all for this video and i'm gonna see you in the next thank you for watching